A fantasy draft is the great equalizer in Madden franchise. And we are gonna keep things especially equal today because I am gonna let the CPU select my team and we are gonna rebuild it from there. And this is gonna be hard because the CPU makes some questionable picks sometimes. And we might not start out with the best team, but at least we should be close to the rest of the teams in the NFL unless the CPU really chokes it. And what else makes this hard is if we don't start with a good team, not many free agents usually hit the open market in these fantasy drafts. So we are gonna have to nail the drafts, the regular drafts, not the fantasy draft. And I don't wanna waste much time, so if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. We've been doing super well with all the like goals lately. And if we can hit just a thousand likes on this video, I'll do another fantasy draft related video or whatever you want me to. So let me know what you wanna see down below. And if I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have, fantasy draft related or just regular Madden franchise related. And we are super close to 25k, the channel's been growing really quickly lately. And once we hit 25k, as most of y'all know, I have something very special planned, so be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Maybe you don't even know you're not, be sure to check, because you'll want to subscribe. I'm gonna have a lot of banger videos coming out soon. And without further ado, let's get into this fantasy draft. It's gonna be super easy for me, I'm not gonna have to do anything and we are starting at number nine. The Jags take Trevor Lawrence, which is kind of an interesting top 10 pick, but I guess it makes sense for them. Ah, uh, you know what? I forgot to pick Snake Draft. You know what? I don't care. That's fine. I'll, I'll take a high pick in each round. Is that cheating? Maybe a little bit, but hey, the, the Giants deserve it. The Giants need it. They've been probably the worst team in the NFL this year, so <laughs> I'm taking a little bit of an advantage here, but uh, no, no cameras. Y'all didn't see this, but let's see what kind of team the CPU wants to draft. Also, I'm terribly sorry to Giants fans. I said heading into the season that they're one of the sleeper teams in the NFC, and apparently I meant sleeper for literally the worst team in the NFL. I thought they would be a lot better than they have been, so that's my fault, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, Giants fans. But it looks like the CPU did okay. I can't remember the overall the teams I usually draft. I think it's like 85 or 86, but I've seen worse than an 82. I see the Lions got Mike Evans. I thought we had Mike Evans for a second. But without further ado, I've already said that in this video. Let's see what the team's looking like. Okay, wait, this is this is really workable. I was worried this team would just be ancient, like the CPU would just draft really old players. And there are a few older players, but this team is pretty good. Okay, for some reason, I knew the CPU would draft Josh Allen. That's really strange. But for starters, it looks like our first round pick was Tyreek Hill. Uh, we should run a very pass heavy offense. I don't know how the Giants do in this game. Sometimes I see them do well, so we might test out their offense year one. I'm not going to change it yet, but if it sucks, we, we might switch. Our QB is Jared Goff, so that's interesting. He isn't particularly good in this game most of the time, so that's a little disappointing, but we'll see what happens there. You never know. Our running back is Tony Pollard. He's, again, not great in this game, but I've seen him do all right before. We also have George Pickens, Kyle Pickens, Hits, which is fun. The O-line isn't too bad. It's relatively young. I like the Elkton Jenkins pick. We're gonna have to draft a few linemen though, for sure. And then our defense, of course. We have Trent McDuffie as our number one corner. He's been a stud this year. We have Jamal Adams, Alohi Gilman, obviously Josh Allen, like I said, Devin White, that's fun. Our defense, I don't like as much as our offense, but we do have some working, we have some stuff to work with on defense, even though some of it is a little older. Oh, we also have Jay James Houston, that's interesting. We'll have to move him to outside linebacker. But hey, all things considered, this is a pretty good team. It could have been much, much worse, even though we are likely gonna have to find a QB. But you never know. I mean, Goff has done really well in real life, so maybe that will for some reason happen here. But that's all there really is to say about this team. I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of work, but it like I've said about a million times, it could have been a worse starting point. So now let's see how this team does in simulation and we'll get to the mid-season point of year one. Okay, well, at the mid-season point of year one, we are four and three, pretty good. It looks like our offense is unfortunately struggling, but our defense is doing pretty well, so we'll take that. You know, now that I think about it, I wonder who our second round pick was because we have one really good player in Tyreek Hill, but that's our only 90 plus. I don't know, maybe it was Josh Allen. It could have been Jamal Adams, maybe. I don't know if it would have taken a safety that 
that high, and maybe Kyle Pitts. My guess is it was Josh Allen, but in the regular fantasy draft, sometimes I can even manage to get like multiple 99s, so I don't know. But there isn't much for us to do here. Uh, if we sucked, I might have changed the playbooks, but it also might have been too early, but we're doing well. We have some re-signings to make though. Okay, I think it normally does immediately need a contract for your second round pick, so I think it was Josh Allen. Well, also Jamal Adams is here, so I, I have no idea. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. But Josh Allen, five years, 82 mil, sounds good. He re-signs, or Jamal Adams, I almost said Josh Adams. Three years, 33.9 mil, he re-signs too. Zach Sealer, sure, why not? Two years, 17.6 mil, he re-signs. And then, is that it for starters already? I mean, there's Andre James, but eh. We'll see how he plays. I mean, we could re-sign him, but yeah, that's really all we have to worry about here. We have a decent amount of money. So that's it for this mid-season point. And let's get to the end of year one, and we will see how the team finishes. All right, well, we didn't... What happened? What happened in the second half of the year? What went wrong? We didn't finish great. We went 6-11. and 11. What happened? We only won two more games in the second half of the year? Bruh. Oh, God. We went on a four-game losing streak. We won a game. Two-game losing streak. We won a game, and then we finished strong on the season with a three-game losing streak. So that's, that's cool. Again, our defense was pretty fine, but we only had 19.8 points per game. So that's not, that's not great. Let's check out our season stats though. We'll see what went wrong. Jared Goff wasn't great as I expected. 3,500 yards, 21 touchdowns. That's fine. 11 picks. That's a little high. I don't know. I've, I've seen much better. I've seen worse, but that's not, that's not great. Tony Pollard was pretty good. 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. 4.1 yards per carry is all right, but I mean, good amount of yards at least. 999 yards for George Pickens. We couldn't give him one extra yard, really. We couldn't force it to him, but seven touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, only 900 yards. We need a playbook that really uses the number one receiver. We we should try to find one, because we should be using our big weapon more. And the blocking was fine for the most part, but allowing 11 sacks in only 482 pass attempts isn't great, so I don't know about that. Devin White led the team with 113 tackles, though 17 tackles for loss led the team from Michael Pierce. Also 14 from Allen Smith and then 13 from Sealer. And then sacks, 12 and a half from Josh Allen. That's good for sure. But outside of him, I mean, five from Preston Smith, four and a half from Sealer, one and a half from Michael Pierce. That's not great. And then interceptions, three for Singleton, two for Gilman and Hughes, and one for a few players. That's... It's an interesting season, but MVP goes to Josh Allen on the Ravens. All right, Lamar Jackson on the Saints at number two. Tua on the Eagles at number three. This is weird. Joe Burrow on the Vikings. Dak on the Cardinals. Stafford on the Falcons. Patrick Mahomes on the Texans. All right. Kirk Cousins on the Patriots. I could see that for some reason. I don't know why. What a what an interesting list. It's all QBs too. Go figure. And then Offensive Player of the Year for the NFC goes to Chris Godwin. It feels like it's him a lot in these fantasy draft videos for some reason. No Giants up there though. Defensive player of the year went to Nick Bosa on the Cowboys. Oh God. <laughs> the 49ers got Miles Garrett and Aiden Hutchinson because of course they did, but Josh Allen at number four. We'll take that. Offensive rookie of the year goes to CJ Stroud on the Bears. Finally, Bijan doesn't get picked by the Panthers. He's on the, Ra er, the Rams here, but no Giants up there and defense Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Marty Mapu on the Saints. It looks like the Saints did really well, so that's something. I guess it's better than a division rival doing super well, but also no Giants up here. I don't even know if we had any rookies on the team at all. I think we might have had like Jason Taylor as a backup safety, and that's all I can think of. But yeah, that was an interesting season. Um, We definitely need to get Tyree Kill the ball more, but what's a playbook that really uses the number one receiver more than anything else? I can't even think of one. Like a lot of of these use the slot receiver the most out of anyone or they just straight up aren't a good playbook so I don't know I just despise how playbook oriented this game is as you all know it's not my favorite thing about this game Zach Paschal had a thousand yards all right I love Zach Paschal getting more receiving yards than Stefan Diggs this game is great we we might just tough it out though it just feels like such a waste to have good weapons and not use them it looks like the Bills had a ton of receiving yards you know 
know what? We're not gonna end up using Kyle Pitts much with the Bills offense, but that's fine. We'll go with the Bills. I know I said I didn't really wanna change the playbook here one, but seeing how we finished, we're gonna do it. We'll do it. So we will see how that goes, but now let's get into the off season and we will see how much we can upgrade this team because apparently the offense needs it. But in the Super Bowl, the Chiefs take down the Cardinals. The Chiefs make sense, but hey, maybe the Cardinals got a super good team. I don't know. I saw the Chiefs got Jordan Love, which is interesting. It looks like the Packers went with Jacoby Brissett, but yeah, the Chiefs got Jordan Love. I feel like he's overhated in real life. I mean, he's like fine. People think he's like legit bad. He's just like, he's fine. He's whatever. Who's the Cardinals QB though? Oh yeah, it's Dak. Of course it's Dak. This is an all right team though. I mean, is this really a Super Bowl team? I guess it, I guess that makes sense. It's pretty good. I don't know though. That's interesting. But now we're going to get into the super interesting part of this rebuild, which is what we're going to do in the off season, because this team doesn't really have that many massive needs. It's just, we're kind of lacking superstar talent. We of course have Tyreek Hill, but outside of him, there ain't much going on here. I want to see if we got any dev traits though. It doesn't look like it. I was hoping maybe Tony Pollard could, but no. Oh, okay. Josh Allen got superstar. Preston Smith got superstar. Trent McDuffie got superstar. I don't know how Preston Smith got superstar and it looks like Alex Singleton got star and Mike Hughes got star. Did he already have it? No, he got star dev. It, it doesn't explain why, but he got it for some reason. Why did Preston Smith get it? Did he have, I guess he had a good amount of tackles for loss. Yeah, that's probably why. That is interesting. But Josh Allen and Trent McDuffie getting dev traits is pretty huge. I mean, Josh Allen's already pretty much a 90 and then Trent McDuffie should be able to hopefully hit a 90 by the end of this. So that's huge. But I don't think I'm gonna re-sign anybody here. I mean, Andre James, he's not hes not interested. He would be really expensive. I mean, not really expensive at all, but he's also not a scheme fit. I'm good. And then it's just a lot of backups. I guess we can bring Jake Elliott back. Sure, why not? Division rival. Oh, and let's bring the GOAT Will Clap back too. We gotta bring him back. I'm real mature, by the way. He went to LSU. Why did I not know that? But now let's get into free agency and hopefully there are some decent players at least. I mean, maybe we had to re-sign like our second and possibly like fifth round picks in Josh Allen and Jamal Adams. So there, there could be some decent players here. Just kidding. Uh, not really. Oh my God. Who is the best player that isn't a kicker or punter? It is Jordan Whitehead and Kirk Cousins. Yeah, it's not great. Definitely not great. There is Julian Blackman who wasn't very good, but he, he has star dev. We could maybe go for him. Oh, there are 11 other teams interested. Okay, maybe not. So I think it's safe to say we're not gonna be doing much here. Bernard Raymond, that's interesting. Uh, he's also not interested in the team and has a lot of other offers. He did pretty well though. How hard would it be to get him? Impossible. There are two other teams that have max offers, so that's not gonna happen. Demario Douglas is here at a 76 overall and he's interested. We might go for him. Why not? It looks like he was pretty good for whatever team he was on. What team was that? The Chiefs. And I want to do something here. Oh, <laughs> there are about a million other teams interested. I guess we'll go player friendly and hope that we can get him, but I don't know. So that's all we're going to do here. And let's see if we can get Demario Douglas. No, he goes to the Rams. You hate to see it. But here in the draft, we have the number six overall pick, the Texans pick at number one. Wait, I thought they, oh, they have the Cardinals pick. God, I've said it like a million times, but I hate how it doesn't reset draft picks. In the fantasy drafts, it's just stupid. So this must be the Cardinals pick. So the Texans were good and they're going to have the number one overall pick. That's not broken or anything. But now let's get to our pick and I'm not 100% sure what I want to do here. I'm never sure about the drafts though. There were a decent amount of QBs, but I didn't focus scout any because I want to give Jared Goff another chance. I don't want to just give up on him immediately. We do need a center, but I'm not going to take that top six. We could use another pass rusher maybe, or maybe a corner, maybe a safety if there's a really good one. Let's see. Should I just take a random chance on a QB? That might not be a good idea, but none of the edge guys look very good. This QB looks pretty good. I just wish I focus scouted him, but he does look good. So does James Wilcox, but I think Tracy's better. Ooh, Joe Rodriguez looks pretty good too. Lots of A's. Josh Gonzalez looks decent. I think Tracy's just a better version of him though. There are some interesting players here for sure. Should I just go with a QB? I mean, it's the, it's the fun pick here. I'm sure people would be mad at me if I replaced Jared Goff, but I don't really see anyone else here. Whoa, 42 bench reps. That's 
interesting. But all right, let, let's take a chance on a QB, and we will go with Nathan Tracy. Elite strength, elite throw power, a few A's for his ratings, nothing bad for passing at least. Everything's at least a B, which is nice. Only 21 years old. All of his traits look good, other than could use some improvement with recognizing pressure, which isn't great if that's real life, but this isn't real life, thankfully. So let's go with Nathan Tracy, only 21 years old, out of Clemson. Sounds good to me. I knew it. I knew it. I don't know why I knew it, but I knew it. Normal dev. God, dude. <laughs> why have I only been getting normal dev QBs lately? There was a streak where I was only getting hidden dev QBs. It felt like six in a row were hidden, and now like the last four I've taken are all normal. <sighs> Hopefully he's a good overall though. I mean, he looks good. We'll see. And what do we need here? We could definitely go for maybe a receiver, maybe a center. I don't know if there will I don't know if there will be any good pass rushers left here. There was BJ Rose, but I don't know if he's good. Um, eh, no. <laughs> there are a few good looking D linemen though. There's Craig Killings. Ooh, he has better speed than the other guy I was looking at. Not a very good pass rusher though. He does have a tackle and then a few Bs. Maybe a pursuit and play rec, but I don't know. Has bad injury. And then there is Isaiah Field. There's also Rashawn Bass. I definitely want to pass or a power rusher more than a speed rusher because that's kind of our scheme. But the other defensive end I was looking at is Isaiah Fields. He had 41 bench reps at the combine. Not as fast as the other guy, but I think he's a better pass rusher with at least B power moves. I mean, the best this guy could have is B finesse moves, only has C power moves. Do we really need D line though? I mean, kinda, a little bit. Lacks discipline, so he might have normal dev, has A to C injury. I don't know. I've become obsessed with trying to predict the dev traits for no reason. They're hard to predict a lot of the time. So let's go with Isaiah Fields out of NC State. Normal dev, of course. The like early second, late first, good looking D linemen normally do only have normal dev, but he looks like a pretty good player, so we'll take it. But 0 for 2 on dev traits so far, that's tough. Fields I didn't expect to have normal, but the QB I was hoping for a dev trait with. And now I do want a center for sure. I mean, as much as Will Clapp is a legend, I don't, <laughs> he's pretty terrible in this game. I'm not gonna lie. Thad Forbes looks pretty good. He has good strength, or great strength, I guess, but you know what I mean. Sidney Phelps also looks decent. He's a good pass blocker. He's interesting. Normally, pass blockers don't have very good strength. I wonder if I can get both. So he's supposed to go third to fourth round. Forbes is supposed to go also third to fourth. Maybe a trade-up question mark? I mean, we do kind of need offensive lines, so I like Forbes a little more, so let's start with Forbes. He's a little better of a run blocker, not as good of a pass blocker, but a little better strength. So that leans slightly in Forbes' favor. So let's take him here. Hidden dev, 89 strength. Finally, we get a dev trait. Good lord. And let's see if we can trade up from that fourth round pick with the Bengals, maybe, I guess. We might as well. They need a QB. Well, lucky for them. Just kidding. We didn't re-sign Tyson Bajan, I guess. All right, cool. Would Chikuma Accor... This isn't really a realistic trade. I mean, it's rare that you see a trade up with just a player involved. But hey, this isn't a realistic rebuild. So who cares? Oh yeah, George Fant is their starter. I mean, he's fine in real life, but here this is definitely an upgrade for them, and they take it. So now, let's get a better lineman, hopefully. Uh, now that I said that, he's gonna suck, but here, let's go with Sidney Phelps out of UCF. Y'all have seen him. I don't really need to show him again, even though I am for some reason. Might have normal dev because he has lax discipline and not great injury. I, I don't know. Let's take him. Okay, he does have a dev trait. See, I just, I don't know how to tell. I give up. I don't know. He's wearing 69, though. That's pretty cool. Also, also a 69 speed. Nice. I hope he's not only a 69 overall, it, or I hope he's not only a 69 overall, but if he is, I guess I wouldn't complain too much because again, I'm immature. But here is a recap of the draft. We did all right. <laughs> Nathan Tracy's a 76 overall. I doubt he was the best overall QB in the class, but maybe the best one that was available, or I guess he was the first QB taken. <laughs> I thought there were more, so just no QBs got taken. Cool. Joe Rodriguez looks pretty good. 78 overall. Overall, what's his dev trait? Oh god, this is gonna hurt. What's his dev trait? Ah, cool. I should have known. Awesome. I want to die. Oh, and even better, there was a 76 overall QB with a dev trait. Hunter Patterson. Really? He was as good? He... I thought he... Oh, I thought he was a lot worse. That's cool. I guess that's what I get for not focus scouting any of the QBs. <laughs> awesome. But hey, I mean, I guess, I guess I drafted a QB the same overall. I just got unlucky with the dev trait. I don't know what to say. But Isaiah Fields, only a 73 overall. I thought he 
you would be a little better. I mean, that's normally what these D linemen are. Oh, see, how is B power moves only a 70? That's why I thought he would be better. He just doesn't have power moves, even though it said it was a B. Like 70, I would consider like a C or a C minus. I don't know. But their whole number system works weird now. I hate it. And then the two linemen look good. Phelps is actually better than Forbes. Phelps must be a really good pass blocker. Like really good. Yeah, 82 pass block as a rookie, 80 power, 80 finesse. He looks good. He's a terrible run blocker though. I mean, he has 75 run block, but 63 power, 63 finesse. So that's not ideal. I guess one of these guys are going to have to be a backup though. Unless I want to start him over someone we have, we could. How tall is Phelps? He's only 6'3". That might work at tackle though, if we want to try something weird there. Is he our new left tackle? I don't know if I feel great about that, but he could be. I mean, it's not like, not Kelvin Beecham. Um, DJ, it's not like DJ Humphreys was that good, so I don't know. And then the CPU, I don't know what they really did. This tight end isn't great. This tackle's fine. The, this corner's fine at a 68. This was definitely a draft of all time. I, I will say that. But here we are gonna do an interesting trade. We are gonna trade Jared Goff away. Look, there's, I, I feel like there's no winning. I'm sure he's gonna win MVP with the Lions now that I traded him to them. But if we keep him, I feel like he won't do well again. I just rarely see him do well in this game, no matter what. I feel like it's always been that way though. Even if you could like develop Jared Goff into a good player in the old games, it still, he wouldn't perform great. I feel like I remember that all the way back in like Madden 18 or something. But we are getting two first round picks in return from the Lions. Again, don't know how realistic that is, but we will take it. <laughs> That's a lot of value. I don't know where those picks are gonna be because the Lions are probably gonna be good now that they have a QB, but we're given full trust in Nathan Tracy. Will he work out? I don't know. Will we replace him at the end of the year even if he sucks? Maybe, but we're gonna hope that he does well. We'll just see. And another trade here, we're gonna trade DJ Humphreys to the 49ers for a third round pick. We're kind of getting rid of the players from the draft that I, I don't really want. And we're actually getting pretty decent value in return, so I'm happy with it. But here's a look at the team heading into year two of the rebuild. More changes than I expected, honestly, but we're looking pretty good. Up to an 83 now, and of course we should develop throughout the year. I mean, we're looking a lot younger this year, of course. We got rid of, I guess, pretty much all of our older players on offense other than Tyreek, but I don't want to get rid of him, obviously. So we have a few rookies starting on the O-line. We have obviously a rookie QB. We'll have to see what we can get from Nathan Tracy. Can quarterbacks wear number zero? I don't know. It, it's kind of cool. I guess another question is, is there a quarterback that wears number zero, like a backup somewhere? I don't know. That's interesting, but we'll keep it. I, I like it. And then on defense, I don't think anything changed. Or no, we drafted Fields, Isaiah Fields. Again, I'm, I'm disappointed by his overall, but he looked a lot better when I was drafting him. You can't say he didn't look good. So I don't know, but I'm happy we have so many more dev traits this year that should help this defense grow even though it is a definitely a bit older than our offense especially like the linebackers and Preston Smith I guess and Michael Pierce but hey it's not looking bad god damn my voice went out on me there but now let's get to the midseason point of year two and hopefully we can start strong and actually finish strong unlike last year but you never know oh <laughs> all right remember what I said about starting strong and finishing strong strong. We're 0-7. I saw the 3-3 three and three of the Falcons, and I was like, oh, that's not bad. And then I realized, oh, hey, we're not the Falcons. We're, <laughs> we're the Giants, and we are 0-7. That's cool. I'm guessing our QB is really struggling. Uh, no? Tony Pollard isn't doing well. What's the problem? Does our defense suck? Oh, okay. I'm gonna probably bench Jonah Williams. Uh, why are we 0-7? We're not... Our stats don't look that bad. I've seen much worse. It is our offense, though. So, maybe... Maybe the Bills, maybe the Bills playbook isn't the best. I don't know, it's good for me most of the time. It's good for me like 75% of the time. The other 25, it's terrible. So we'll just stick it out. We'll see what happens. But we have some re-signings to make here and understandably, Elkton Jenkins isn't really interested. How's he doing though? He's doing really well. I wonder if we could stick him at tackle. We might get a whole like shift of our offensive line here. We'll see. Because he obviously has tackle experience. I'm pretty, don't quote me on this, but I think he has 
has NFL experience at every offensive line position. Maybe not center, I uh, I don't know. But like left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle, I'm pretty sure. But we're probably gonna have to overpay him here. Four years, 77 mil, and he just doesn't like the team, but we'll, we'll give him more money at the end of the year. Worst case scenario, we can just tag him. Honestly, tagging him might be cheaper. We'll see. Mike Hughes, he did get a dev trait, but he's already 27. He's not really gonna develop much more. He was pretty good last year. He wasn't bad at all. This year, he's not doing quite the same, though, so we'll wait. We have James Houston and Preston Smith. How's Preston Smith doing? Not good, once again. So we'll re-sign James Houston, because he's cheaper. Okay, he doesn't take it. Cool. Michael Pierce, do you want to re-sign? One year, 16 and a half mil. Okay, he re-signs. Cool. That seems a little expensive, but fair enough. Jonah Williams, that's hilarious. God, sometimes Jonah Williams is actually, like, good in this game, and sometimes he's the worst lineman in the game. There's, like, no in-between, because last year he held up really well, and this year <laughs> he's allowed seven sacks and, like, 400 snaps. I don't know. Like, yeah, already he has more sacks allowed than last year. Last year he was great. This year he's the worst. So I don't know. It is what it is. Also, I found a decent UDFA in Thomas Bell. I, he's he's just fine, though. He's only a 68. Just normally, I don't even look for UDFAs. God, in the old games, you used to be able to find crazy ones, though. You could find, like, 80 overall uh, quick dev receivers. I think that's what it was. There was quick. Was it just slow, normal, quick, and superstar? I think those were the four. I like the names of the new ones better. Also, slow was, like, the most depressing thing ever, so I'm glad they got rid of it. I went and played a Madden 18 franchise kind of recently, and I, I had an unbelievable amount of slow dev traits, and I just wanted to, I wanted to die. I, I had enough. <laughs> But anyways, hopefully things will fix themselves here. If not, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we'll just figure it out. So let's get to the end of the year and we'll see how we can finish. Okay, just kidding. We're going to make some trades here. We might as well. We're terrible. We might as well get rid of some of the older players. So we're going to trade Preston Smith to the Cardinals for a third round pick. This is definitely too much. But guess what? Not a realistic rebuild. So <laughs> my, my, I guess, I don't know. What do I want to call it? My, my go-to is always trading players players for third round picks. I don't know why. That's just what it is. Damn, what is the Cardinals team? Oh yeah, they were in the Super Bowl. How was this a Super Bowl team? I mean, they have some good players, but their defense looks not great other than Chris Jones. And I guess they have Kendall Fuller, but I don't know. I guess that's just the Dak Prescott effect. But we are going to be trading Alex Singleton to the Bills for, you guessed it, a third round pick. He's 30. He's going to regress. So we'll just trade him off and it shouldn't be too hard to replace the number two linebacker. So we're good there. Would anyone want Morgan Fox? I don't know. Probably not. Like, every team has a better starter than him. I guess... Or no, that doesn't even go through. <laughs> I guess we'll take a sixth round pick for Morgan Fox. Sure, that works. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot the whole reason we were doing this is to get rid of Jonah Williams. So we're trading him to the Cowboys for... I'll, I'll give y'all a second to take a guess what I'm trading him for. It's it's a third round pick. So we're gonna have a ton of, a ton of third round picks this year. Oh yeah, also, wait, we have a... A tackle with hidden dev as a backup. I'll just give him the starting right tackle job for the rest of the year. I was gonna give it to uh, Neiman, or however you say his name, who's like decent in real life, but we might as well give it to a hidden dev guy. So I'll refill out the roster, and now let's get to the end of year number two. Okay, well, in year two, I mean, we were better than last year. We, we finished seven and ten. It's kind of the opposite of last season, because I mean, this year we finished seven and three. We ended up being pretty good in the second half of the year. Of course, being 0-7 in the first half kind of kills things, though. And then last year, we were, what, 4-3 and to start out and finished, like, 2-6 and or something? I don't know. Or 2-8, and I guess it would be. <laughs> so, hey, maybe, maybe we're improving. Maybe we're improving. I don't know, but let's check out the stats. Nathan Tracy was all right. I mean, he did better than Jared Goff did, stats-wise at least. 3,200 yards, 26 touchdowns, 8 picks. A little better completion percentage than Goff had, too. He was solid. Tony Tony Pollard, this is what I was saying about Tony Pollard. Sometimes he's decent in Madden Sims, sometimes he's not very good. He did have a thousand yards, but that was in 281 carries. He only had 3.8 yards per carry. Did have nine touchdowns at least, but eh. I don't know. Tyreek Hill, a thousand yards, but I was hoping for a few more, but hey. Better than last year, five touchdowns. George, George Pickens, 900 yards, six touchdowns. Nice, I guess. Kyle Pitts didn't do much, and Tutu Atwell definitely didn't do much. It looks like this offense definitely just 
uses like the top two receivers. Ooh, Sidney Phelps was pretty bad. 12 sacks allowed. So was Thad Forbes. Eight sacks allowed at center. But we had a couple linemen do really well. Brandon Howard in the second half of the year only allowed two sacks at right tackle. Oh, he is superstar dev. Really? He didn't develop that quick. <laughs> but uh, we might have to keep him now. Where did we even get him at? I can't remember. I think he was just a CPU pick. Yes, yeah, sixth round pick. That would be pretty nice to turn into a good starting tackle. I know he's going to absolutely suck if we start him again next year, but that's just how simulation is. And Will Hernandez joins the all castration team, which if you don't know is my imaginary list of players that don't allow a sack in a season. So he was really good. I don't know about the left, left side of our line though. And then Devin White led the team in tackles with 124 tackles for loss, 18 for Sealer, 15 for Allen and sacks, 13 and a half for Josh Allen, five and a half for Fields, four and a half for Pierce. Justin or James Houston didn't do a whole lot <laughs> to be fair. Only got like half a sack per hundred snaps. That's not great. And then Devin White led the team with interceptions with three, two for Eric Stokes, and then one for a few players, including Josh Allen. That's interesting. Didn't Josh Allen intercept Josh Allen one time? That was kind of funny, but oh, MVP goes to Russell Wilson on the Bills. So hey, maybe, maybe there is something to the Bills offense. I guess we'll just have to see. Jalen Hurts on the Broncos. I feel like that would just end up being another Russell Wilson situation. I'm not going to lie. They just kind of have a QB curse for some reason. But Russ has been pretty good this year. His stats are definitely better than he is doing, but he's doing well. He has really good stats though. Also, Mac Jones on the 49ers. That's all. That's almost what happened and maybe what they should have done. I know Mac Jones kind of sucks this year, but on the 49ers, he would probably be pretty good. Anyways, I can hear the Yappington City comments right now. I'll shut up. Offensive player of the year goes to Hunter Renfro on the Vikings. He had like a lot of receiving yards last year. I can't remember how many, but he did really well. They also have Joe Burrow, but no Giants up there. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt on the Seahawks. I saw that when I was going to trade Preston Smith. They also had Nick Herbig, so they're taking inspiration from the Steelers, but Josh Allen at number two. I wish he could have won that, but I didn't even think he would be that high up. I thought he would be around five or six, but Devin White also up there at number nine. Nathan Tracy does win Offensive Rookie of the Year. I didn't think he would be good enough, but Hunter Patterson at number two. We know he has superstar dev, so that's tough. And Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Mel Melvin Knighton for the Commanders. Shout out Terrence Knighton. He was pretty good. But Isaiah Fields at number seven. I'm kind of surprised he wasn't higher. He did all right. He had like five and a half sacks or something. Oh, well, at least we won Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's pretty huge. Our defense was good. Our offense sucked <laughs> still. I think the run game definitely is a big part of that, and I want to find a new running back. It's just a matter of will there be one who actually performs available in free agency because we definitely can't find one through the draft. They always suck. So this could be a pretty huge free agent class. We'll see, assuming there's anyone available. But in the Super Bowl, the Saints take down the Ravens 35-24. So I guess Lamar Jackson takes down his now former team. That's an interesting one. Who was the Ravens QB now? I already saw it, but I forgot. Or I think I saw it at least. Oh yeah, it's Josh Allen. I, why do those pictures look so big? Am I tripping? Why is everything normally that big? I think I'm just tripping. I don't know. But yeah, Lamar Jackson gets revenge on his former team. Interesting. No upgrades for our QB though, surprisingly. I thought for sure we would have some. But did he get a dev trait? I'm assuming he did. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's an automatic dev trait. No. Am I losing my mind? Did he not actually win Offensive Rookie of the Year? I'm confused. <laughs> did he win it or not? Or did I not see it right? Am I okay? I don't think you can check it in the resign period anymore for some reason. Yeah, that's stupid. Did he win it or not? <laughs> What's happening? Okay, I guess I was lied to. Maybe he didn't win Offensive Rookie of the Year. I'm so confused. I... What? <laughs> did they change how that works? Like, do they actually only have one Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year now? Like, for both conferences, they only have one? I, I'm confused, but we have some re-signings to worry about here. Uh, Elton Jenkins probably won't accept this. Okay, just kidding, he does. Mike Hughes, I'm good. James Houston, I'm good. That's all we're gonna do here. We're we're good on pretty much everybody here. So let's get into the offseason and let's hopefully add some good players to this team if there's anybody available, but I don't know. The highest overall was like a 79 last year, so probably not. Okay, it isn't great, but I've seen worse. We could go for Cam Akers. He's been doing all right. I mean, just tore his Achilles in real life, but looks like he's doing well here. Miles Sanders has been awful in real life, and he kind of has been here too, low-key. Damn it. All right. I don't think we're going to be able to get Cam Akers. That kind of sucks. That's like the one running back here who actually plays well in this game. What if I just overpay the hell?
hell out of him. Okay, no, that's still, that, that's like 14 mil per year I just offered him and he's still not interested. All right, never mind. we're not doing that. But these are the players I'm gonna go for in free agency. It's definitely nothing crazy. We actually might go for a receiver too, I guess. I mean, we don't even really use a third receiver, but I wanna sign some players. I just don't wanna go the whole rebuild without signing anyone, so. Brian Branch, Grant Delpit, Leighton Van Der Esch, and Jahan Dotson are gonna be the four players I go for. Honestly, I'm not feeling very good about this, and I think we only might get one or two of these guys at most. But you never know, I guess. We could get three, we could even get all four. But these are like some of the top free agents available because, you know, nobody hits the open market in the fantasy drafts. So let's see if we can sign these players. They all sign, and yeah, we only get two of them, Leighton Van Der Esch and Jahan Dotson. I wanted a DB for sure, but oh well. We'll have to see what we can do in the draft. But hey, at least Josh Allen got X Factor. That's kind of cool. Okay, wait, why do we have the number one overall pick? I, again, I get like memory wiped overnight. I, who did we trade? Oh yeah, we traded Jared Goff. Were the Lions that bad? <laughs> did we screw them by giving them Jared Goff? Maybe we did. Yep, we did. Okay, so definitely no MVP there. And it looks like I made the right choice because he is just not good in this game. Uh, That's interesting. I just didn't expect to have this high of a pick. So I didn't really scout anyone this high, which kind of sucks. There isn't really even anyone I want here though. I mean, we could maybe go for Tyler Bacon, but he's a speed rusher. We don't really want a speed rusher. We want a power rusher. He doesn't have bad power moves though. It's a B and he is a top five talent for sure. He looks crazy. Maybe I should just take him. If I take him, he's gonna have normal dev. I know what's gonna happen, but he's interesting. All right, I think we'll just take him. There's literally nothing bad about him here at all, other than the injury. Oh God, he is gonna have normal dev, isn't he? Whatever. Tyler Bacon, only 21 years old out of Boston College, left-handed, just like me for real. Let's take him. Okay, he has hidden, thankfully. Not the most insane athlete in the world, but decent athleticism for sure. Just a really technically refined looking player, so we'll take it. Should be at least like a 75, 76 overall. At least a 76, I would hope. But you never know. Ooh, there's some good looking receivers. I mean, we don't need receiver at all, but these guys do look pretty good. Ooh, Marcus Lamb is interesting. Hmm. But we... <sighs> I'm not gonna go for another pass rusher, but this was the guy I was thinking about taking. He is only a first to second round talent, but doesn't look bad. A power moves, A pursuit, A tackle, B awareness, A block shed. He's pretty good looking. So either way, I think we would've got someone decent, but I do think we need a corner here. We could trade down for sure too. I think that's what I'm gonna do. JD Baxter looks really good, but I don't know if I quite wanna take him this early. We also do need a safety, kind of. I need to up <laughs> Alohi Gilman's overall in my rosters. He's not a very high overall in them for some reason, but oh God. The Titans would only give us a three and a seven to move up from 17 to eight. Maybe we'll just take the corner here. I forgot how shit trading is in this game. All right, yeah, let's just go with the corner here. There's still a lot of QBs available. I mean, hey, our, our guy apparently didn't win offensive rookie of the year, so maybe we could go with one. I don't know. None of these guys look great though. Mark Wells kind of looks good. I don't know. I barely have him scouted, so I don't know, but let's just go with with JD Baxter out of Nevada. That's an interesting school. Probably normal dev, honestly. I, I don't know though, let's just take him. Yeah, he does have normal dev, but I think he'll be a good overall, so we'll take it. There are still a couple QBs available, including the one I said looked decent, but I don't think they would be better than our current QB, so I don't think we're gonna do that, but we could, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, there's some good looking centers. Oh, okay. There's Nick Murray and Avery Abbott. Avery Abbott looks insane. Let's just take him here. Why not? We kind of need a center. Ours wasn't very good last year. He ran a 4.89, 39 bench reps, which somehow isn't elite. It's only great. I hate how that works. Yet it doesn't have the best power in the world. So I, whatever. His ratings look good. So let's take him. Hidden dev, 91 strength, 74 speed, 86 excel for a center. He looks good. We'll take that. And I don't know how many of the third round picks I'm gonna take. I guess we'll see. I guess maybe just one or two, if there's even anyone good looking. Ooh, Frank Walker's uh, interesting. <laughs> I think he would look a lot worse if he was fully scouted, so maybe not. Eldon Manning, that's, that's a name. Okay, this is like the freakiest defensive tackle class I've ever seen. Let's go down the list. So there's Eldon Manning. He's maybe the weakest one out of the group and he still looks good. Has elite speed, good strength, great acceleration, 
a 4 8, 31 bench reps at the combine, 34 at his pro day. Has A finesse moves, B play rec, B tackle. He looks pretty good. Jarius Pendleton, which is an interesting name again, 44 bench reps at the combine. Good enough speed for someone who's 333 pounds. A 5 1 4 isn't too bad at all. There's Cordell Parham. Also, Pendleton, eh, I guess his ratings aren't that good. There's Cordell, Cordell Parham. Ran a 4 7 5, a 4 7 flat at his pro day and 35 bench reps. Elite jumping too. And he has A finesse moves, A play rec, B awareness. This is maybe the guy I'm leaning towards. Maybe. There's also Bryson Newham, or Newman. No, I just mixed like both of their names, but Bryson Newman. He ran a 4 7 6. He's like barely slower than the last guy by 0.01 at both the combine and his pro day. And then 34 bench reps at the combine, 35 at his pro day. He might even be better because he has B awareness, B play rec, B block shed, B tackle, maybe A finesse moves. He's listed as a run stopper though, so maybe not. I don't know. And then there's Reggie Burl, 43 bench reps at the combine, 43 at his pro day, even decent enough speed. A tackle, but the rest of his ratings don't look that good. He's just like pure strength. God, I want to go with like a few of these guys, but I think Parham is maybe the one I'm leaning towards. I don't know though. He's a little worse in run defense, but a little better in pass rush than Newman. Maybe, maybe. That's a big maybe. I don't know. We might just go with both. I, I'm not sure because defensive line isn't like a big need for us at all, but if we can go with a good looking player, we might as well. So I'll probably take a few of these guys. Let's start with Parham though. Of course he has normal dev, but good speed, good acceleration, really good strength too. Good looking player in general. Just of course no dev trait. <laughs> of course. But I'll make a few more picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well here is how we did in the draft and we, we did pretty well, especially towards the third round, but we'll get to that in a second. Tyler Bacon is a 77 overall. He is, I was hoping you'd be a little better, but a 77 isn't bad for a rookie. I'm surprised that, well, I guess I'm not surprised that that was top five, but oh yeah, I, I guess it was. It was technically <laughs> tied for number two in the class. The best player was only a 78 overall, but we also got someone who's tied for number six in the class, which again, we'll get to in a second. What team are we? We're the Giants. So yeah, Bacon looks good, and JD Baxter is technically a top five talent too. Again, I just wish he had a dev trait, but not much I can do about that. Avery Abbott is a 74. He looks really good. Cordell, Cordell Parham isn't actually that good. I thought he would be a lot better. I'm surprised he isn't better though. What really holds him back from being good? I guess the block shed and the tackle aren't great. He has good finesse moves though, 90 strength. The better of the two was definitely Jarius Pendleton though at a 76 overall. 97 strength, good block shed, good tackle, good play rec. He's a good player for sure. I don't even know how much playing time he's gonna get, but he might get a decent amount. We'll see. And then I took every pick down to, I guess Howard was my last Last pick. But Andrew Dawson, this receiver right here, no dev trait, unfortunately, but he's a 74 overall. That's good value for the third round for sure. I mean, that's probably a first round talent. Ben McLeod, I thought would be a little better. He just had really good strength. Does it even show strength? I guess it doesn't. I didn't even check what it was. What was it? He had like 25 bench reps and it was first. He has 75 strength. Okay. And he had good ratings. He wasn't the best in coverage as run support safeties usually aren't, but he's only a 71. I thought he would be better. And then Damian Carrington looks pretty good. Carrington is like a great last name for a running back. He's a good player for sure though, has a dev trait. I'm sure he won't play well because Madden generated running backs never do well, but maybe he'll get a few touches and do all right. And then the last two picks I took weren't great. The CPU took some all right players here. <laughs> Jason Hayes was a linebacker, but I was like, we kind of need safety more. So I moved him to safety. He looks all right. He's a 67 there, has a dev trait. So that's kind of cool. I'll probably thin him down a little bit. So he makes a little more sense as a <laughs> safety. But anyways, let's get into year number three of the rebuild. But here's a look at the team heading into year number three of the rebuild. Hopefully we can do better this year. I know I said that last year, but hopefully this is our year. Smile. We do have a lot of rookies and just young players in general, so hopefully that should do pretty well for us. Hopefully that makes us play better because they should develop. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Again, I feel very robbed for not actually getting rookie of the year with Nathan Tracy. I mean, did it eventually show up? Doesn't look like it. Does it show it if I go to stats and contracts? No. Am I stupid? Did he not actually win it? I'm so confused. Is there a way to check like last year's awards? I, there might be. I don't know how to though, but there might be. I, let me, uh, let me check back the footage.
put it. Okay, yeah, no, he he won it. I'm so confused. <laughs> Maybe they did make it so there's only one rookie of the year and one defensive rookie of the year. I don't know. That's interesting though. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year three and will we finally be good? I don't know. Probably not because we were terrible in the preseason, but hey, I don't know. But at the midseason point of year three, we are only three and four still. This has been a way tougher rebuild than I expected. We don't even have a bad team though. This team just sucks for some reason. Now our offense is doing well and our defense is kind of struggling, so make it make sense. I don't know. But hey, maybe we'll have a good second half of the year. We will just have to see. But let, we have some re-signings here. Is there anyone important? There's Kyle Pitts. We don't really need Kyle Pitts. I wonder how much value we could get for him if we traded him, because we do need some things. Let's see. All right, well, interesting trade here. We're going to trade Kyle Pitts to the Dolphins for Cam Curl, Marquise Brown, Greg Dulcich in a third round pick. We're getting a lot of value in return for him. Again, he needs a contract. He's not interested and we don't use him very much. So there's really not much point in keeping him around here and paying him a ton of money having to overpay him when we don't use him. So instead, we're going to get some stuff we actually need like a, another good safety, like a number two receiver, a replacement tight end who's decent enough, and another third round pick. Y'all know me. I'm, I'm the third round pick king. What can I say? And I guess it's good timing because George Pickens needs a contract and he's not very interested. So maybe we just won't re-sign him. I don't know. I don't know if that trade will lower, lower our overall or raise it or what's going to happen. I guess it lowers. Were we in 85 or did we stay the same? I don't know. Oh, I guess I haven't really moved everyone to the right position yet. But yeah, it's an interesting trade. I think it works out really well for us though. We could honestly trade George Pickens too now. I guess we're just going trade crazy here. Again, if he was interested, I would want to re-sign him, but he isn't. Same with Zach Sealer. We have a lot of D linemen and he's not interested. <laughs> the Browns definitely need a receiver. He would borderline be their number one. How crazy can we get here? Ooh, okay, that's close. Stone Forsyth, do y'all want him? No, okay. <laughs> Daryl Luter, that's close. Again, I want to emphasize, not a realistic rebuild. <laughs> we are trading George Pickens, Daryl Luter Jr. in a fifth round pick to the Browns for a first round pick. We'll take that. And we are going to trade Zach Sealer to the Ravens for a second round pick. Did the Ravens draft him? I feel like they might have. Or was it like the Saints? No, it was the Ravens in 2018. Okay, so he's going back to his original team. And because Michael Pierce is interested, we'll try to re-sign him another one-year deal, one-year 13 mil. And he, I hate that message, but he needs more time to think it over for literally no reason. All right, cool. Well, no, I guess that makes sense. But the rest of the players here are all just backups. So now I'll rearrange the depth chart. We're gonna have to do a little bit to it. And let's get to the end of year number three. We might not finish great, but I'm banking on there being good free agents and being able to make a year four push. We'll see. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number three. And if you've seen one of my videos before, it's surprising, but y'all know why we're here. Not surprising that you've seen one of my videos before, but surprising that we're here. <laughs> um, If you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video. Again, just a thousand likes. And I don't remember what I promised, to be honest. Uh, I'll do another fantasy draft video, I guess. I don't remember if I even promised anything, but it'll let me know that y'all want to see another one. So be sure to do it. And again, be sure to subscribe because, you know, if you've made it all the way here, clearly you're enjoying at least a little bit. So it'll help you see more of my videos. And, you know, of course, once we hit 25K, I got something very special planned that I am very excited to do. But this is how the team is looking. Unfortunately, we didn't get a single dev trait over Star. We got very, very, we've been really unlucky with the dev traits in this rebuild. All of them are either normal or Star, except for like a guy who was a 66 overall at tackle had Superstar. That's it. <laughs> so you hate to see that, but not much I can do about that. I thought for sure Bacon would have Superstar though, but I guess not. But in year number three, if you can already guess, we made the playoffs going only eight and nine, by the way, we had a losing record and made the playoffs. I'm surprised we did have a losing record though. I mean, it looks like we had a top 10 scoring offense and the number 11 scoring defense. So it's not too bad. I guess our yards per game allowed on defense didn't look very good, but hey, if we're scoring, we should be winning. You know what I mean? And Nathan Tracy, good Lord, 3,800 yards, 31 touchdowns, only three interceptions, 70 completion percentage. I don't know how he didn't win rookie of the year last year, even though he did. I'm still confused about that, but maybe he'll get a dev trait this year for having a good year. We'll see though. Tony Pollard was okay. 1,100 yards, 4.1 yards per carry, eight touchdowns, better than last year at least. Marquise Brown and Tyreek Hill both had 1,100 yards. I don't know how many of those yards were with, were with 
with us for Marquise Brown, but not much for receiving outside of those two. And blocking, you know, Brandon Howard was our, our worst lineman, but he still wasn't bad at all. Eight sacks allowed, that's not terrible. And the rest of the line was very good. And then on defense, Devin White led the team with 142 tackles, 115 for McDuffie. Tackles for loss, 13 for Fields, 11 for Allen, 10 for Pierce. And sacks, 16 for Josh Allen. He's been a stud. Eight and a half for Tyler Bacon as a rookie. That's not bad at all. We'll see if he wins but doesn't win Offensive Rookie of the Year or Defensive Rookie of the Year. We'll see. And then five and a half sacks for Fields, four for Pierce. Not bad numbers there. And then interceptions, five for Trent McPhee, three for Devin White and Leighton Van Der Esch, and then two for J.D. Baxter and Eric Stokes. Baxter, a couple interceptions, but not many pass deflections. Okay year for him. But MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. Nathan Tracy at number four. We'll take that. And then Offensive Player of the Year goes to Joe Mixon for the NFC. Tracy at number six. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons on the Commanders. Josh Allen at number two. I was hoping he could maybe win it, but unfortunately just barely gets beat out. Trent McDuffie at number eight. Oh yeah, Devin White at number five. I almost missed him. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Alex Easley for the Commanders. Easily winning it. I'm hilarious. Oh, I just closed out of it somehow. My joke was too good. What can I say? I saw um Carrington at number 10. I didn't even know he got any touches. And Tyler Bacon wins Defensive Rookie of the Year, but does he actually? Or will it go to Eric Good? Or if that's even how that works? I don't know. JD Baxter at number three. We'll take that. My mind just shut off for a second. Jarius Pendleton at number seven. So a few defensive rookies up there. We'll take it. But we are, of course, going to be taking on our division rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, in the wild card. They have Tua at a 94 overall. Looks like he was pretty good. Had a 28 to 3 touchdown interception ratio. Shout out to the Falcons. Sorry about that. But we will go chess match for this game. Give us play rec, and it'll obviously give the other team play rec too. And we have a first of many scenario for our first playoff game of the rebuild, which is kind of depressing, but it is what it is. But we will go play it cool. Y'all know me. And let's see if we can somehow get a win here. Probably not, though. I don't even know if we deserve it. Okay, we do get a win somehow, though. I've I've gotten smoked by much worse teams than the Eagles, or at least, like, comparing our overall to theirs. We had the same overall, but we beat them by 11 points. I mean, I'll take it, but it's weird. And we're gonna be taking on the 14-3 and Atlanta Falcons. Maybe I should just go with, like, both Falcons playbooks sometime, because they're, they're always good. Even if they don't have a good team, they do have a pretty good roster here. But I don't know. It's, it's interesting. But we have a recap for the playoff rivals. I don't know why I chose the Giants, maybe just because they're like the worst team in the NFL, but I don't know. But we get some sweet, juicy staff points. We'll take it. And then we have a recap for the first for the first of many should be more sweet, juicy staff points. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time speaking right now, but it happens. It happens to the best of us. And we have a hot opponent scenario here. Shout out Bobby Schmurda. We will go be confident, plus 10, like everything for both teams. That's cool. I We don't necessarily deserve to win this game, but if we do, I guess I won't complain. We have a few upgrades. Jarius Pendleton is one of them. And now let's see if we can somehow take down the Falcons. No, but it was a close game, at least 24 to 17. But we are unfortunately out of the playoffs. But now let's get into the off season and let's really work to upgrade this team heading into the final year. And let's see if we got any dev traits. That's a big thing too. Oh my God, the Ravens destroy the 49ers here in, I guess, a Super Bowl rematch. The Ravens win 35 to seven. Not a close game there. We have a couple upgrades though. Trent McDuffie got X Factor. I was thinking he could win best DB and it looks like he probably did. So up to an 88 with X Factor. That's huge. Uh, was it? Yeah, best DB. So he got X Factor and 4,500 XP. That's nice. And then Tyler Bacon. Did he get Superstar? I'm guessing he did. Maybe. Okay, he did. Cool. He's gonna play like shit this year. I mean, that's always what happens with rookie pass rushers. They do pretty well year one and then they suck or they suck year one and then do pretty well, which is weird, but that's normally what happens. And did we have, did we get any other dev ups? I will say our two interior O linemen, uh, Abbott and Hernandez both deserve a dev trait, but linemen never get dev traits. Tracy didn't get a dev trait. Damn. I thought for sure he would, but I guess not. We didn't get any other dev traits. That kind of sucked. I mean, at least we got a couple, but I feel like we were deserving of a couple more. It is what it is though. And now for re-signings, there isn't really anyone here I want back. I mean, we could bring Michael Pierce back, but we could also look to upgrade there. Yeah, I mean, we might as well bring him back. He's, we have a ton of money to work with. So we'll offer him one year, 9.2 mil, and he takes it cheaper than it would have been at the mid season. So I'm happy about that. And now let's see what we can do in the off season. Can't wait for there to be absolutely nobody here, but even if there is, we might as well just spend the money while we have it. Okay, there are kind 
kind of some players here. Kind of. Ooh, Anthony Richardson is here. He's been pretty good, too. Do I trust him more than our guy, though? I See, I don't know. He's been on the Bengals, and the Bengals playbook, it sucks when I use it, but for them, it's pretty good. So I feel like, uh, I don't know if he would be good for us. Tracy was good, too, so we're not going to replace him there. Unfortunately, isn't a very good running back here. That was the big thing I was hoping for, but unfortunately not. But let me look through here, and we will see what we can do. But these are the players we are going to go for in free agency. It's going to be Chris Olave as the big one. We'll see if we can get him. I hope we can get him, but I don't know. We're also going to go for Kenny Moore, Grady Jarrett, Shaquille Barrett, Ernest Jones, and Jervon Dexter. Some of these players are just depth like Barrett. I guess Jones would be in Dexter, but you know, I like I said, I wanted to spend the money. So if we can get a decent player, we might as well. You know what I mean? We could even go for a tight end too, but like, eh, there isn't anyone that good here at all. I guess maybe Tommy Tremble to be the number two, but we don't, we don't even use our tight end one. So I don't, I don't care. I don't even want to use brain power to do that. So we're not gonna, but I guess we'll just see if we can sign any of these players. They would all be good additions regardless, but the one I want is obviously Olave. So let's see what we can do. Most of them sign except Shaq Barrett and Kenny Moore. And, oh, oh God. Okay. Even Grady Jarrett doesn't sign. We get Ernest Jones and Jervon Dexter, but those were the two I cared the least about. They're both backups. Chris Olave goes to the Packers, which is a little understandable because they at least had a lead, but we had the lead for Grady Jarrett. And I set, I always set the free agent interest to very high because it should be. I mean, as I've said a million times, it is so fucking stupid that you cannot get a player even if you have the lead. The top offers takes everything into account. There shouldn't be a scenario where like the Chargers, for example here, could get Shaq Barrett. But I don't know, this game's stupid as hell sometimes. You hate to see it. That really sucks actually. But hey, we'll see if we can get Kenny Moore and Shaq Barrett, but I don't know now. Maybe we'll only get one of them. We don't even get fucking Kenny Moore, dude. What? What is happening? <laughs> what is this? All right, well now none of these corners would even be an upgrade, so there's no point. All right, well Shaq Barrett, do you want to sign? No, apparently he doesn't. All right, well this is the stupidest free agent class I've ever had. This game sucks in so many different ways. <laughs> Kill me. All right, well I don't even think there's going to be anything we can upgrade great in the draft unless we get like a really good corner a really good d lineman or like i don't know a really good tight end we don't even use tight end though so i mean maybe we could get a really good tackle but howard hasn't been bad at all so i don't know we'll see what we can do in the draft that's unlucky as hell though but here in the draft we have the number 10 pick which is kind of nice the bucks have the number one pick do we have three first round picks this year or is it two i think it's three because we have number 15 so it must be three yeah yeah, we have 10, 15, and 25. Oh yeah, we still have the Lions first round pick. That's why we have number 10. Okay, that makes sense. But who do I want to go with here? Because like, again, we don't really need much. I mean, we do, but there isn't much we can really get from the drafts anymore. Really, the only thing I'm looking at is D-line, but there aren't that good of D-linemen here, honestly. So I'm not super sold on D-line. Deontay Billups looks pretty good, but there's some good D-tackles late, like Deontay Florence looks pretty good. Bad pursuit, but he's interesting. And then Cliff Elam is interesting. He's really fast. So I think we'll go with them later, but I'll just take those. I won't really show us taking them. I don't know. They're just, I don't know what I want to do here at all. This linebacker looks decent too. Should I go with a corner? I guess we maybe could. It's definitely not our biggest need, but we don't really have many needs. So Reggie Poe looks pretty good. So does Austin Wheeler. Yeah, sure. Austin Wheeler or er, mm, yeah, Austin Wheeler, you are the pick. God damn it. Normal dev. All right. Um, do I even want to take anything else? Is there like a tight end maybe? Or I don't know. Yeah, I guess tight end. Sure. If there even is one. Sean Candidate looks pretty good. I might go with Evan or Ethan Potts though, because he's pretty fast. Elite speed, elite agility, elite acceleration. Good jumping, good change of direction. Isn't the strongest tight end, but he does look pretty good. His deep and short route might not be great though. How about Candidates? He has a deep route, a short route, or maybe a, to, it may be a short route. We could maybe even get both, <laughs> but we don't even need tight end. Let's just go with Ethan Potts. Sure. Hidden dev. I honestly meant to go with the other guy. I just made a quick decision, but hey, he looks good. Good speed, good excel, hidden dev. Sure. He's probably like a 74 or something. I have no idea. And now I guess the last pick I show is going to be another center, Josh Kendricks. I mean, I <laughs> we might as well go for O-line depth. He has good strength, so let's take him here. Hidden dev, 89 strength. Sounds good. Looks like a good player. But now I will see y'all for the draft recap heading into year three or year four of the rebuild. I always need to
to really think about what year it is for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, wait. This is one of the worst picks I've ever made. Austin Wheeler is a 68? Was the entire corner class terrible? He was a man corner who had C zone, so I figured his man would at least be a B. Apparently not, and it's a 69 overall. He he is a 68 overall. I'm so confused. <laughs> what was not good about the... I don't know. Can I chalk that up to being unlucky, or was that a bad pick? Because he did not look bad at all. He looked really good. I thought he would be like a 78, or at least closer to a 78 than a 68. Again, not the strongest draft class in the world. There was a 79 overall, but he went one pick before us, so. But he only had normal dev too, so I don't know. What a weird draft. What a weird rebuild this has been. We won Offensive Rookie of the Year, but didn't. We had like the unluckiest free agent class I have ever seen. Also, Reggie Poe. God, this. Reggie Poe was like considerably slower than the corner we took, but has the same speed. That's cool. That's awesome. I love that. Love how that can happen. Anyways, Ethan Potts is a 75. He looks good. Josh Kendricks is a 77. And then the two defensive tackles, Florence is a 72, and Cliff Elam is a 73. I wonder if he would be a good defensive end. Sometimes the pass rusher types are, but sometimes they're not. Okay, he would be. So we'll put him there. And the CPU took Marcel Hopkins, 74 overall, 91 speed. Damn. You know, I always try this with linebackers. I gotta see. Not that it would even be beneficial at this point, but what would he be at safety? That's corner. He'd be a 69 corner, which you know what? That's better than the corner we took at number 10 overall. He'd be a 75. He would go up. That's interesting. But we have safeties now, so it doesn't really do anything. But anyways, let's get into year four of the rebuild, and we will see how we can do. But here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. We're looking pretty okay. We would have been a lot better if we didn't get absolutely screwed in free agency, but an 84 isn't bad. It isn't the best, but it isn't bad. We'll see where that ranks in the NFL. It's probably like mid. I don't even know if it's considered good. It's probably just like average. Okay, yeah, that might, uh, it might be a little above average, but yeah, it's about average, a little above. We would have been maybe the best team in the NFL though if we actually got free agents. We had the lead for them and that's literally all I can do there. So I I don't know. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. You're mad, smile. Also, we should have gotten a dev trait for Tracy. <laughs> also, we only hit like one dev trait the entire rebuild past a star. So I don't know. This is just the definition of unluggy, but could have been worse, I guess. I'll stop complaining now for at least like a minute until I complain again. Also, Kendricks, I want to start somewhere, but I can't really just, oh, I want to start Hernandez at right guard. I'll change that. But I can't really justify starting him over anyone because I mean, maybe Jenkins, but Jenkins hasn't been bad. Like Phelps has been doing really well, or at least this last year he did. The year before was a different story, but Jenkins has been good. Abbott was very good, fucking Hernandez was really good, and Howard was really good, so, or pretty good. But if, like, Howard or someone sucks the midseason, we could start Kendricks over whoever's doing poorly. That's the plan. But yeah, y'all have seen the team, y'all have seen who I've added, what we've done here. It's a pretty good looking roster. So let's get to the end of year number four, and we will see how this team can do in simulation. I can't wait to go nine and eight and miss the playoffs. It'll be great. All right, well, here we are at the end of year number four. I'm really realizing I forgot to spend the upgrades, but oh well. But once again, y'all know why we're here. I'm not going to plug again, uh, but also I am. Be sure to like and subscribe if you for some reason haven't already, but you've made it all the way here. And actually, I will plug one thing. Turn on notifications for the channel if you want to get notified whenever I upload. It'll make sure that you never miss a video if you really enjoy them. I'd very much appreciate that, but that's all I'm going to plug. I'll, I'll shut up now. But this is how the team is looking. And you will notice one change. We did a bench Phelps for Kendricks at left tackle. Phelps allowed eight sacks in like 450 snaps. I guess it'll, or yeah, it says eight sacks. I forgot it doesn't show the snaps, but that's on pace for what, like probably 18 if he played 1,000 to 1,100 snaps. So we put Kendricks in there and he must have done a lot better. We were only three and four at the midseason, by the way. We weren't doing great, so I thought it was going to be another year of no playoffs. But in year number four, we completely rebounded and finished 12 and five. This team has no consistency is what I'm figuring out for some reason. We'll be really good in one half of the year and then really shit in the other half. Like we were, I mean, three and four isn't awful, but it's not great. But we were amazing in the second half of the year. We went nine and two or nine and one. That's insane. Yeah, we went nine and one. Our only other loss was to the Rams. Interesting. We absolutely destroyed the Titans though. <laughs> so we'll take that. And we should obviously have a lot of upgrades too. 
we have three for Ethan Potts, which is kind of surprising. Maybe we did finally use a tight end this year, so maybe it would have been good to just keep Kyle Pitts, but no, we got a really good return for him, so that's fine. But now let's check out our season stats. We'll see what we did. Nathan Tracy, he's been really good, and if he had a dev trait, he would have only done better, hopefully. I mean, maybe not, because as y'all know, overall, higher overall almost seems like a bad thing sometimes, but no, he's been really good, especially the last two years. His rookie year, he was pretty good, but dog, he only has, what is that, 17 career interceptions? That's crazy. I've had quarterbacks get like 30 in a season, <laughs> so I'm happy with that. Tony Pollard, 1,200 yards, six yard, or six touchdowns. I wish it was six yards per carry. Only 4.1, but pretty good. 1,250 yards for Marquise Brown and 14 touchdowns. 1,200 yards for Tyreek Hill. Only two touchdowns, though. And yeah, Ethan Potts was solid. 700 yards for him. Blocking, ooh, ooh. Our offensive line was pretty bad, actually. Brandon Howard allowed 10 sacks. I mean, in total, it's 46 sacks. So that's like, not great, but not the worst, I guess. But yeah, Howard wasn't great. Abbott at center was pretty terrible. He was our worst lineman, I would say, other than, I guess, Phelps. Kendricks allowed nine sacks at left tackle and only a little under 700 snaps. That's not great. And Jenkins and Hernandez were solid. That's definitely our worst offensive line year so far when it's the highest overall it's been. Go figure. But 130 tackles for Devin White led the team. Tackles for loss, 16 for Allen, 13 for Bacon and Pierce. And sacks, only nine for Josh Allen. That's his worst year so far. I think he almost has nine sacks in real life through like eight games, but hey, whatever. Tyler Bacon with eight and a half sacks, four and a half for uh, Pendleton, and then interceptions, four for Devin White. He's been really good. Two for JD Baxter, Trent McDuffie, Jamal Adams, Eric Stokes, and Cam Curl. So a lot of interceptions. That's, I think that's the thing that saved our team. Let me check. Where do we rank in the NFL for interception? Uh, tied for third, or no, we are third. So that's pretty good. I actually want to see sacks allowed. Is that a thing you can check? I guess we would just go to passing stat. Joe Burrow only got sacked 16 times, and yeah, Nathan Tracy did get sacked the most times in the NFL, which sucked. Jared Goff, our former QB at number two, <laughs> along with Will Levitt. So it's interesting, but yearly awards, MVP goes to Joe Burrow again. Or has he won one? Maybe not, because it was Lamar last year. I think Lamar's won two, and then I think Josh Allen might have won one. I'm not sure, though. But Nathan Tracy at number three will take that. Offensive player of the year goes to Debo Samuel, now on the Vikings. Maybe he's been there. I don't know. Nathan Tracy at three, Marquise Brown at six. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt, Devin White at five. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Joe Jeffrey for the Cowboys, Ethan Potts at number two. That kind of sucks. And then defensive rookie of the year goes to Ruben Belton for the Buccaneers. No Giants up here. So no awards, but it is what it is. We might have won best QB. Uh, maybe. Nah, it might have just gone to Burrow. Yeah, it was Joe Burrow. That kind of sucked. But who cares? We wouldn't even get upgrade points for those anyways. That'll be after the season. But we are going to be taking on the Chicago Bears in the wild card. So let's simulate this game out. This could very well be the end of the rebuild, but we will see what happens. Okay, no, we do thankfully win 28 to 21. We're up to an 86 overall now. The team is pretty good. Would have been better if we actually got the free agents that we had the lead for and should have gotten, but whatever. I'm not mad. You're mad. Um, But we are going to be taking on the 11 and 6 Falcons in the divisional. I think that's the team that took us out last year. They weren't quite as good this year. We do have two overall on them and the home game, so this is a recipe for disaster. We'll see what happens. Okay, we do win. Wait, wasn't the score the last game 24 to 17 too? But we beat them by that score this time. And we're going to be taking on the 9 and 8 Cowboys in the conference championship here. We have an upgrade for Trent McDuffie and Deontay Florence. Trent McDuffie did finally reach a pure 90 overall, up to a 92 with morale though, so that's nice. Who's the Cowboys QB again? I can't remember. Did they have Russ? No, I don't know. Oh, what? Okay, they signed Anthony Richardson, but they also drafted a QB in Alex Easley. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> See, that's another thing I hate about this game. Shocker, I know, and I'm complaining again, but why would a team sign a quarterback to a big contract and then draft a QB high, I'm guessing? Yeah, first round pick. I am so confused, but whatever. Anyways, let's see if we can somehow take down the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are always broken in this game, even though they were only nine and eight. And unfortunately, we lose 33 to 22. What a weird score too. I guess we'll see who wins the Super Bowl. I can't wait for them to go on to not win the Super Bowl, even though they took us out. The Ravens have been probably the best team in this rebuild, though. They've been really good. And yep, the Ravens do win another Super Bowl. They have been very good. But of course, that is the end of today's rebuild. I really hope y'all enjoyed. This was a fun one, even though we couldn't get a Super Bowl win. Ooh, Florence has Superstar. Good thing that doesn't matter. That's cool. But you know what? 
but I did what I could. I did all I could. And again, if y'all enjoyed, be sure to drop a like. Be sure to subscribe. I really, again, hope y'all enjoyed. I've said that like 40 times now. But let me know down below any fun rebuild ideas y'all might have, or maybe a realistic rebuild y'all would want to see. And if I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out. But with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.